It's cool now to like burp in the middle of your audio and pretend it was an accident. Oh, that was an accident. I'm so quirky. Woo. Hello, my geeks and creeps, my explainers and blood drainers, my little boo lallies. Rebecca Parham here. Under the haunted oak and past the tombstones many, you find yourself on my channel and I've got chills aplenty. I came up with that right here on the spot. Are you proud of me? I put out a poll asking you guys what idea you wanted to see for a smaller Halloween themed video and it was between this drawing video and a ghost story. And the drawing video won by a very slim margin. Many people wanted to hear the ghost story or you wanted both videos, you greedy little monsters. And what the plan for this drawing video was, I was going to do three different drawings and I was going to put as many animators in it as possible. I kind of got a little obsessive over this particular drawing, the one you're seeing in front of you right now, and I kind of spent all my time on it. So instead of three rushed, mediocre drawings, you're getting one really good one. Quality over quantity, they say. Sure, you can make a living on YouTube that way. As you can see in this charming little over the garden wall scene that I've set up, Jaden is Word, the odd ones out is Greg, something else YT is the beast because he's got horns, and yours truly is the woodsman because, uh, someone had to be him I guess. I'll just take one for the team here, no need to thank me. Oh, and you can't forget Ari as Beatrice because, bird. You can also see that instead of carrying a frog, James is carrying Harry the moth. It's the little touches that make it. If you haven't heard of Over the Garden Wall, it is a Halloween favorite to many. It is particularly one of my favorites, so I highly recommend it. It's on Hulu. Please go watch it. Now, a lot of people did want me to tell the ghost story, and I think what they were expecting was a story about another quote-unquote real ghost encounter that happened to me, and what I was actually going to do was I was going to make an original ghost story, like a campfire ghost story. However, I do have a relatively new ghost encounter story that I could tell you about, so why not please everyone? Let's get the spooky music going, we'll make a thing of this. About two years ago, while I was still working as a freelance artist, I came home very late one night from my office. At the time, I was babysitting my sister's chinchilla and had put the cage on the end of my dining room table facing the living room. I came in at about 11pm, kicked off my shoes and put my stuff down, when suddenly the chinchilla started barking. I don't know if you've ever heard a chinchilla bark before, but it's basically a high-pitched yipping sound that they make when they're scared or to warn other chinchillas of danger. This chinchilla, her little paws grasping at the bars of her cage, had fixed her gaze on the corner of the living room and was barking at full volume. She would not look away from this corner, even when I went over and stood in front of her to see what the problem was. I bent down and looked her in the eyes, and it was like she was staring right through me and she just kept barking. And then... It happened. As I was bent down, I heard the voice of a woman behind me coming from the corner of the living room. It was so clear that I thought in that moment my mom or sister had come over to my house while I was at work and they were in the room with me. And it sounded like a little blurb of a conversation, like it wasn't directed at me, but I was overhearing it. I turned around expecting to see someone there, but no, there was no one. No one was in the house, the TV wasn't on, a video wasn't playing on my phone, and I still can't explain what that was. So I come to learn, just a few days ago, that my brother experienced the exact same thing while he was watching my house for me. So yeah, that's fun. Haunted house. Woo! Yay! Ghost stories! What fun! Small disclaimer here, I'm actually not a huge believer in ghosts and spirits and all that. I just really like the idea of them. I love the feeling of listening to a good ghost story. I love all things creepy and dark and spooky. I'm open-minded on the whole thing. I'm waiting for someone to prove me wrong. Someone please prove me wrong because ghosts, it's a cool thing. It's cool. Yay. But I'm not going to debate anybody on whether or not they're real. This is all just for fun. This is for Halloween spooks. Relax, everybody, we're having a good time. So veering drastically off topic, a couple weeks ago I was in LA, which was a lot of fun because I got to see some of my industry animation friends, you know, people who actually worked at the big studios, and I knew them all from school, so yay ringling on that one. But first day I got there, I went to Disney TV and met up with my friend Kristen Gish, who is a storyboard artist on the DuckTales reboot, and before that, she was a storyboard artist on Star vs. the Forces of Evil, so she got a cool job. And then after that, I went to DreamWorks, which was so funny because my DreamWorks friends, they got like a couple of them there, it's great. But they were like, Becca, you gotta come at lunchtime so you can get the free lunch! Because apparently, DreamWorks gives its employees a free lunch every single day. Which, hey, not a bad perk. 
Good job, DreamWorks. One of my friends was specifically an animator and she showed me the Light Fury rig from the upcoming Dragons movie and it's pretty cool. By the by, can I just share something with you that we talked about? It's funny because, you know, you have hardcore fans who will see a trailer like for an animated movie or for like a Star Wars or something like that and you have people like, I don't know, uh, Mad Pat who will analyze a trailer until they practically kill it. And they'll come up with all of these theories as, you know, oh, this is the way the dragons evolved this way because they, you know, they have these wings and their bodies are structured this way. And the DreamWorks people are like, guys, we just did it because it was cool. Or merchandising said we needed to do it because that's something that a lot of people don't understand is that merchandising has a huge say over the story and the look and the feel and the design of a movie. Um, there's a funny story about the first Dragons movie but they had a dragon design where it was going to have like this like big ball on the end of its tail and it would just throw it around and smash things and it was well into the movie apparently and merchandising came up to the story people and they were like you gotta take this dragon out of the movie because we have tried over and over and over again to make a toy for this dragon and we can't come up with anything that isn't inappropriate looking uh take that as you will so they had to 86 an entire dragon design out of the movie simply because merchandising couldn't like make a product to sell. So that's something that you guys always have to realize is that as much as it's fun to theorize, trust me, it's it's so much fun to theorize, but sometimes, you know, something about a movie is just that way because the artist thought it was cool or merchandising came along and said, hey, I want that or a producer came along and say, hey, I want that. Not everything is connected, even though it's fun to think it is. So getting back to the topic of the LA trip, it was kind of nice to see all of my like normal animation industry friends because none of my YouTube friends were there while I was there. I mean like Jaden lives there, but she was out of town. Um, James and Adam were trying to move out to the LA area and they thought they were going to be there in time to see me, but as it turns out they were behind on everything so didn't get to see them. But the main reason that I was actually going to LA was because I was going to surprise Danebo for his 40th birthday. But that meant that I had to keep the entire trip a secret and that was so hard guys because I was going to Disney TV and DreamWorks and, and I was seeing all sorts of cool stuff while I was shopping out in Burbank and it was so hard for me, a social media person, like a, a social media personality is my job now to not like post a picture or say, hey, I'm in LA. So that was like, ugh, that was a, uh, an exercise in restraint for sure. But it was totally worth it because when I did finally get to Surprise Dane, um, I took an Uber to the house and I told the Uber, okay, we gotta like go up the block, like drop me off just a block away or something like that. So I'm going to Dane's house, I'm walking to Dane's house and I'm texting Shannon and he's like, okay, come out to the front, he can't see you from there. So I go out to the front and I kind of hide behind the neighbor's fence because you can't see anything through that fence. And Kevin Bruick comes out. And I don't know if anybody knows who Kevin Bruick is. Um, he's kind of a prankster guy. Uh, he's a big YouTube guy in his own right. And he plays the voice of Grandpa Lemon on Annoying Orange. And he comes out and he's like, oh, Beck, I didn't know you were coming. And I'm like, shush, it's a surprise for Dane. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I got this. And so Shannon comes out and Kevin's like, I got an idea. I'm gonna download this app where you can take a picture of someone's car and put dents in it in the picture. So I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna do that and he's gonna come out to look at his car and you're gonna jump out. And so that's what he did. He downloaded the app, he took a picture of Dane's car and put some dents in it in the photo and then went over and he says, Dane, you gotta come out here. Someone hit your car. And Dane looked at the photo and he's like, that's photoshopped, shut up. And I could hear it because they were all in the backyard. It was so funny. I was like, I was trying to contain my laughter. And he's like, that's, that's photoshopped, shut up. And he's like, no, dude, seriously, you gotta come out and look at your car. And someone else was in on, on the whole thing. And they were like, no, seriously, dude, you gotta go out and look at your car. So Dane like drags his feet out to the front of the house and he comes out and he's like, there's nothing wrong with my car. And then I jump out and he was just so surprised. It was, it was great. And yeah, it was totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. 
But maybe next time I'm in LA, I won't have to like keep it a secret so much and maybe I can see more people because people will actually know, hey, Becca's there. So the last reason that I was in LA was to meet up with my merchandise people for the first time face to face. And we were also gonna do a photo shoot of all my new merch and put it on the website. And if anybody is like a fan of MatPat or if you've bought any of MatPat's merch, then you know Creator Inc because they, they uh, they do MatPat stuff, and it's funny because at, at VidCon, Matt came up to me and he's like, Becca! I'm like, what, what? And he's like, have you done merchandise yet? And I'm like, N no. And he's like, I'm gonna introduce you to my people. Like, I've had four different merchandise companies and they are by far the best, and you know how he talks. So it was Matt that introduced me to, to Creator Inc. And yeah, so when I got there, it was funny, the first day I got off the plane and with suitcase in hand, I couldn't even get to my hotel, with suitcase in hand I had to meet up with one of the Creator Inc. guys at a Starbucks so I could try on a pair of the plus size socks and approve them. And can I just say, I am so happy that you guys are happy about the plus size socks because like, it was kind of a headache to get them made. You know, it was kind of a process because it was something a little out of the ordinary. It wasn't the normal standard size. So I am so happy that all of that was worth it because I get so many wonderful messages from you guys saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much for, for putting them in a plus size. And that's what I love, you know, that just makes me so happy. So, and they're selling almost as well as the standard size. Like that's, that's insane to me. It's like, there's so many of you who just absolutely have always wanted knee high socks, but they just don't ever fit. So yay. <laughs> So, but if you want any more from the Halloween collection, there's still stuff left. I'll put a link in the description below to the store. You know, we still have the t-shirt and the pin and the sticker sheet, and of course the socks. So uh, it's all limited edition stuff. I don't want anybody to miss out. So please, if you're thinking about buying them, go ahead and just go on, go on over to the store and don't miss out. Um, anyways, I hope you guys liked this, uh, this video. It was much needed practice for me to do digital painting because believe it or not, I'm, I'm a great drawer, but I'm a terrible digital painter. Like I, I can't do color and lighting and textures to save my life. But anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this. I really liked the way this turned out and thank you so much for tuning in, but now I gotta tune out. Bye.